York for Sunday, July 4th, 2010. Now, from the CBS Broadcast Center in New York City, here is Dana Tyler. Welcome to Ion New York and happy 4th of July. It's going to be another hot one today. So before you go out and enjoy some fun in the sun this holiday weekend, let's uh, make sure you double check how you're protecting your skin. An investigation into hundreds of sunscreens found only 8% made the grade. CBS 2 Cindy Shu reports on which sunscreens are the safest. A lot more of us are using sunscreens than ever before, focusing on the level of protection we think will keep us safe from the sun. And that's precisely the problem, because a new study says the vast majority of the products we're using don't get it done. Many products fail to deliver on UVA or broad spectrum protection, and many products contain ingredients that can soak through the skin and pose other kinds of health hazards. Out of nearly 500 sunscreens, only 39 made the recommendation list from researchers at the nonprofit organization Environmental Working Group. Topping EWG's list of sunscreens that are safe and effective, Badger, California Baby, Jason Natural Cosmetics, La Roche-Posay, and All Terrain. The researchers say considering only the SPF is a big mistake. Many sunscreens contain controversial ingredients such as vitamin A and others that are potentially harmful such as oxybenzone. It's the most common sunscreen ingredient. It's in about 60% of all products on the market. It seeps through the skin pretty readily. It's a potential hormone disruptor and it's linked to allergies. The problem, most sun lovers don't read the ingredients or know what to look for. No, I never notice the ingredients or look. No. You just want the lowest number. Yeah, pretty much. Dr. Monica Halem is a dermatologist at Columbia University and says we should look for sunscreens with titanium dioxide or zinc dioxide, which are the best protectors. As far as the SPF number, you want to look for a sunscreen that has an SPF factor of 30 or higher. You want to look for um, ingredients that both protect ultraviolet B and ultraviolet A radiations. Dr. Halem says sunscreen needs to be reapplied every two hours, waterproof or not. It's only part of the protection plan when it comes to skin cancer and aging. A hat, sunglasses, and shade complete the picture. Cindy Shu, CBS 2 News. Another new study by NYU School of Medicine found that UVA rays cause significant damage to the DNA of pigment-producing skin cells, which can lead to melanoma. Here to talk skin safety is Dr. Ariel Ostad, a dermatologist and professor with NYU Medical Center. Good morning, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Good You're, morning. You, thanks. You were watching that very carefully yes. and uh, understanding and, you know, really wanting to voice the concern about skin protection. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we all know how sun plays a very important part in causing skin cancer and yet what we have uh, as the only way to protect ourselves is really either staying out of the sun or using sunscreen. Uh, a big problem is that majority of sunscreens don't really do a great job of protecting us and unfortunately the uh, consumer who's purchasing these sunscreens can be misled in believing that they're actually being protected. Uh, the problem is that majority of sunscreens really protect us from the UVB rays of the sun which causes a sunburn. And these sunscreens, although they may uh, prevent a sunburn is that they're not really blocking the UVA rays which is uh, a major spectrum of the sun that penetrates deep into our skin damages our skin and can lead to skin cancer. Tell us more about the study that you're doing with the UVA and the pigment producing cells. Well this is actually not my study but it was a study that was done by the researchers at NYU Medical Center and it was a very fascinating important study in that they were able to show that the cells that give rise to melanoma which are called melanocytes which are the pigment producing cells uh, are easily damaged uh, and they're damaged by the UVA rays and unlike other cells, other skin cells or other cells in our body which can actually repair themselves, melanocytes are not easily uh, corrected and therefore once damaged they're mutated and they can lead to melanoma. We heard in Cindy's story talking about the um, uh, component, the ingredient, that we think we're, it's protecting us, but in effect it can lead 
it can lead to melanoma, which is the confusion because the consumer is just going by the number mm -hmm. and not understanding, just getting back to what's in the product. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the problem is that majority of sunscreens... Oxybenzone. Uh, exactly. That is the ingredient. It's called oxybenzone. Majority of sunscreens contain that. It is a good blocker of UVB rays, which uh, causes sunburn. The problem is that uh, in mice, it's been shown to uh, cause uterus, uh, the uterus to enlarge, and it definitely can disrupt the hormone. Uh, the hormones in our body and therefore um, we're not quite sure if it really it can potentially cause problems later on in life however unfortunately that's what's in majority of sunscreens you are optimistic there will be some changes in the regulations uh, I am uh, we're all anxiously awaiting, awaiting the FDA uh, and we're hearing that sometime in October uh, the FDA will come down with the final ruling on what sunscreens should contain and how the labeling needs to be much more transparent to the public in terms of what they're purchasing the main thing is about a few things number one to make sure that the public knows that the sunscreen they're purchasing blocks against UVB and that's determined by the SPF factor majority of sunscreens today really go as high as a hundred and uh, the public doesn't really Realize that anything above a 50 makes absolutely no difference. Mm. Uh, people have this false sense of security that if they're using a hundred, they're better protected, and that's not the case. So that's number one. The second thing is that there needs to be a better understanding of how that sunscreen they're using protects against UVA. And there's supposed to be a grading system that helps us determine that sunscreen whether it protects against UVA or not. So uh, you every day and you uh, deal with patients and, and surgeries, are you, are you encouraged by uh, at least that we are getting a little better at how we protect ourselves, do you think, We're, with the shade, staying out of the sun? or um, Yes and no. I have had patients who, once they've had a skin cancer, once they definitely uh, become aware of how important it is to use the sunscreen. And in that population, I see people who stay out of the sun, they wear their hat, they protect themselves with clothing. And yet I see young people on a daily basis who walk in with a mm. sunburn on their skin and although they are aware of using sunscreen, they feel that they're immortal and they're going to be okay. All right. Well, we all know how dangerous it can be and your information has been helpful too. We need to take care of ourselves in the sun. Doctor, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ariel Osted with the NYU Medical Center. Also, when we come back, uh, one way to beat the heat, how about... Be inside, taken to a museum. The Picasso exhibition at the Met has crowds pouring in. We'll take you there next.